Hello, I'm Kelly and welcome to my Floss Tube channel, Animal Instinct. It's the 4th of November 2021 and I'm back with another cross-stitching update today. Thank you very much for stopping by and spending some time with me. I hope you're all well. Um, I just wanted to start by saying a big thank you to everyone who uh, commented on my last video. I was a little bit overwhelmed um, with all the responses and I'm still working my way through the comments. Um, I wasn't really sure how that video would go down. If you haven't seen it, I just filmed a whole episode on one piece. Um, but thank you very much. I had a lot of fun with that piece that I worked on exclusively during September. And um, I'm really glad that, yeah, that other people enjoyed seeing what I got up to as well. Today's video is not like that. It's just a normal stitching update. Um, I'm going to share with you what I've been up to since I last filmed. And I have a little bit of hole at the end as well. Um, what else was I going to say? Oh, last weekend was the Midagong Stitches Retreat. So I was lucky enough to be able to attend in person two years ago. And it's been held virtually last year and this year. Unfortunately, I had other family commitments over the course of the weekend. So I was only able to log in on the Friday evening. But it was really nice to catch up with some people who I hadn't seen in ages. Um, all right, I'm a little bit short on time, so I'm just going to get right into it. So the first piece that I've worked on since I last filmed is Firefly. This is my biggest whip, I'm trying to work, um, I'm trying to put about 5,000 stitches a month in. This is it, if you haven't seen it. The artwork is by Jenny Parks and it's a Gecko Rouge kit. I'll pop a photo in of where I was last month. I just finished the main cap in the middle and I really enjoyed continuing to work on it. Uh, what I did this month, let me just, I should have got this ready, sorry. I decided, and I think I said on my last video, I need to do some of the background. Um, <laughs> and so I've focused on the background above his head. Oh gosh, I'm just going to slide the chair out. <laughs> wow. So that's where we are now. So this is the very bottom of the piece. I finished that in September. And I'll just zoom in a little bit. It's getting a bit hard to show. Okay, so I think... Where was I before? I had completed the background above his head to this, this page line here. So I've done all of this and then I've done a little bit of, so this is the, um, the next cat. You can see I actually started um, stitching his sleeve when I first started the piece. That's the middle of the pattern. I've done a little bit more of his sleeve there um, because I'm doing two over one tenth stitch um, for the background and one over one full crosses for the cats. So I wanted to make sure I, you know, could work out what was what. Um, it's 25 count Lugana. I also did just a few little stitches um, on this cat here. She's wearing a red and gold dress. So I've just put like a handful of stitches into her as well, because again, I was trying to work out where the um, cats ended and the background started. So there's about nine and a half thousand stitches, I think. Um, tent stitch goes a lot faster than single crosses, but I don't actually find it any easier to um, stitch. I have to really concentrate. For some reason, I find counting difficult uh, when I'm doing tent stitch. I don't really know why, but I'm, I'm really happy with how far I've, I've come. There's still a way to go. So the top of the piece. So this is the top of the piece here. So I've still got um, two, two pages above where I'm up to to, to go. But um, yeah, it's coming along nicely. And I'll continue to try and put in um, 5,000 stitches a month uh, going 
going into next year. And again, probably with a few, um, you know, focus months again, like I did in September. So I'm really happy with, with that one. Um, then I worked on my Cryptid Stitch Along by The Witchy Stitcher. Last time, so two videos ago, I had done the border around the edge and then there's a different cryptid coming out roughly weekly um, that started in September. I got up to date um, and now I'm behind again. <laughs> I'm only one cryptid behind though. So this is the whole piece. It's on a piece of 32 count Belfast linen called Duck Egg by um, number 12 Stitch Co. And then coming in, it's coming along really nicely. So there's the first four cryptids. For some reason, the Nightcrawler <laughs> really appeals to me. They, this, I don't know, they look like teeth to me, <laughs> stitched, but I did find the video of the supposed Nightcrawlers online and they look like a big pair of baggy trousers with no body, <laughs> just kind of sauntering along in the dark. Uh, there's Mothman, Jersey Devil, the Enfield Horror, and then... Um, Chupacabra and the Hopkinsville Goblin and then there's also is it Frog Frogman I think down here um, so that's the only one I still need to do um, enjoying that so I will get caught up to date on that one we they come out every Friday night I think Friday that's just been the, there wasn't one so that means there will be one this Friday um, you can see it's on my um, quantum frame by Omni which I don't use that often but there's a reason why I've got that out and the next one is also on um, on the frame as well. The next one was a little bit of a surprise. <laughs> well, yeah, I, um, so firstly, my dad just turned 70 and I pulled this piece out about two weeks before his birthday, um, thinking, oh, I wonder if I could finish that in time for his birthday. So it's the John Clayton collection cricket scene. From the 90s my mum started it in the 90s and asked me to finish it um, but by the time we rediscovered it you know a few decades later it had some rust marks and the needles caught in the linen uh, rusted into the linen <laughs> so I just restarted it I believe it's on 32 count antique white Belfast linen um, I went pretty gung-ho I'll pop a photo in hopefully of where I was and yeah, I went pretty gung-ho on this one until I realized there was no, no way I was ever going to get it done by dad's birthday. So it's, it's more for my mum, but um, dad's a cricket nut. So um, I know he'll, he'll appreciate it when he sees it finished as well. Um, that is where I am up to now. So it's full of... Um, like fractional stitches so most of the crosses except for the grass and that really background sort of gray green are two strands of thread um, there are a few blends and the grass and the, the background bushes are full crosses just with one strand of thread um, there's a heap of like I said a heap of fractional stitches like when you look at it cl up close it looks very blocky and strange but from a distance, it gives the, you know, the desired effect. Um, so as you can see, I've got as far as the batsman, but if you look at the <laughs> picture, I, I 
um, to like here. I've still got all of that to go. It's it's full coverage for what's stitched. It's all full coverage. It's just the sky isn't stitched. So once I realised um, there was no way <laughs> that was going to happen, um, I did put it down. Um, but I still do want to keep keep working on that one. It would be great to finish that one after such a long time. Um, yeah, so we had his 70th birthday celebration. Um, whoops. Same weekend as the Midagong retreat. So I needed to definitely make an appearance there. All right, the next piece is my temperature typography by Sarah, the stitching mummy. Um, I put this away at the end of August because I was working on Firefly all month. And when I pulled it out in October to pick it up again, I didn't realize, I thought I'd finished August, but I'd only um, finished part of August. So I'm still catching up on this one. This is where we're at. Uh, so it's on 25 count Pewter Lugana, one over one full crosses. It's in DMC. And we're coming out of winter. October is going to be a lot more green than September was. Um, and just a couple of days ago we had, I think it was 33, 34 degrees. It was very warm here in Adelaide. So I do want to keep working on that to get it back up to date. It won't take too long. And then my last project that I've been working on um, is this one. This is mugshot of a cat felon arrested while attempting a New York bank heist. It's by Gecko Rouge, um, artwork by Tanya Bond. It's a fairly small full coverage piece. I'm stitching it on 25 count Lugana, one over one full cross. Um, I think I was maybe just under a third of the way through and this is where we are now. So I'm working my way down. I think I'm, oh, I can't remember, <laughs> just under halfway. I know his nose is the halfway point. So I might be at like 46, 47%, something like that. And so there's only, I think it's something like 16,000 stitches to go, but it's, it's not an easy stitch. There's no blocks of color. You always have to be consistently like counting carefully. Um, yeah, it's interesting because it's only small, but it's, pretty confetti heavy but it look at I mean yeah <laughs> it looks great so it's gonna be nice to get to his little jacket or t-shirt a bit more color um, and I will keep on working on this one this month I would love to finish this this year but I don't know the end of the year is rapidly approaching <laughs> so who knows? Um, but that is, yeah, that's staying out and that's getting a lot of attention. Okay. That's all my stitching for the last month or so. Um, yep, whipping through, <laughs> whipping through this video. So I have a little bit of haul. Um, I received my diary that I like to use for my stitching journal. Um, I've used the same style, this will be the third year now, um, and it's just a really simple diary. This is the one I got. So it's by Delphonics, doesn't say that on the front, but it's by Delphonics, it's called Roll Barn. Um, there's a few different uh, covers you could get. And I guess I'll just show you how I use it. I know a lot of people use the electronic journals now and I just can't quite get away from good old pen and paper. 
So it's got a handy little um, elastic thing to keep it closed. Um, it's spiral bound. It's really simple. I'll show you this one and then I'll show you my current one and show you how I've been using it. So at the start, there's just the, you know, the year planner, I guess. I don't really use that. Then it actually starts from October the year before. So um, I won't be starting using it until January. But what I do here... It's got all the months listed out by day and I just put in my total daily stitching counts in here just for reference. I do like counting my stitches, especially with Pattern Keeper. Um, and then it goes into the monthly views. So in this bit, I just pop down what I work on each day. If I finish or start something, I'll, you know, it's very simple. <laughs> put a red circle around it. Um, I note down when I do a floss tube so I can remember what, what I was doing when I last filmed. And then, so that starts in October 2021. It goes through till December 2022. And then all of the rest of it, all of this, are blank pages. I think you can see, yeah, it's just like graph paper. Um, so you can do what you like in there and I've kind of refined it as I've gone but I, I just like this format because it's simple um, and then right at the end I don't really use them too much but there are some plastic sleeves as well if you want to slip, slip stuff in there so very simple <laughs> diary um, it's a nice size. I just keep it sitting with my stitching gear and I've just gotten into a habit of recording what I've worked on and, and how many stitches um, and other info. So that's for next year. This is my one from this year. Um, this is this year's one. It's actually, this one's got glow in the dark, the windows for some reason. And the, yeah, the moon is too. Uh, so let me just quickly flip through it. So that's my like stitch counts for each day. Excuse the scroll. I can read it. <laughs> um, and then I actually just can find it. I just went through Pattern Keeper and popped in the stats for the end of 2020 so I knew where I was up to percent wise. Didn't even finish doing that, but yeah, that gave me an idea of what I was starting the year at. And then, well, I had a really busy January. So that's my January. <laughs> I stitched a lot in January so I just write down each day what I work on and if it's a start or a finish I just note it um, and if I do a floss tube I just note that too then for the whole back section um, I had <laughs> this is a bit sad <laughs> I have one page to list my fully finished objects, my FFOs for 2021, and check it out. <laughs> I haven't had any. Oops. It's been a strange year. Then I've got finishes from this year. So I do note down um, finishes and just a bit of info. Again, excuse the scroll. <laughs> No, one's else, no one else is supposed to look in here. Uh, and then I've got, I've catalogued also my starts. Same way. Um, then I do, based on um, 
the diary part where I write down each each day what I work on. Um, I just do a bit of a monthly summary. So, um, like in January, I stitched. This is just for my own interest. I stitched 30 out of 31 days. I stitched 19,700 stitches. I worked on 10 different projects. Um, I had five new starts. I finished one thing. I didn't fully finish anything. And then I just list down like how many days I worked on each project. So I've done that for each month. And a little bit further. I've just noted my it's like my stitches each day. Um, it's a little bit different to the view at the front because if I work on two or three different projects in one day, they, they get listed individually and I just work out the total to go in the front. <laughs> That's so messy. It's all good. And as you can see, like literally just using two colors of pen. I love the idea of bullet journaling and all of that, making it pretty, but I don't have time for that. <laughs> Um, then just because I was interested, I have like a summary for the, the month and the total for the year so far. So I've just hit 200,000 stitches for the year, which is crazy. Surprised me. Um, then some things that I use all the time, I have right at the back. So I have doing my temperature typography piece and I've noted down the maximum temperatures each day and just tick them off when I've stitched them on that piece and on the page before I've got the color um, color code the temperatures and which DMC colors I use for each one then I have some info on like challenges I'm in so <laughs> this is Whipgo I failed dismally on Whipgo and I worked out why. Um, it's, it's fine, it's a learning process. Um, my goals that I set for Whipgo were time-based and I realized I don't count how much time I spend on stitching, I just stitch. Um, so yeah, if I do Whipgo again, I won't do time-based goals. Um, but that was that and then yeah, that's as far as I got timing timing stuff it's just just didn't enjoy that so I didn't keep that up um, this was another uh, challenge that I did in January stitch on a piece um, 30 minutes every day oh it's a visitor let's have it say a quick hello mister He's been a rat bag today. I'm on holidays, but I had to log in to work for a whole day of training, which is a bit rude today. And yeah, he was a bit of a nightmare. Anyway, uh, what else have I got? I did um, full coverage fanatics. I did a bingo um, challenge with them. So again, I just wrote down everything on here. Uh, that's about it. Oh, no. Uh, for Stitch Mania this year, I worked on story time and I, I just worked on that until it was finished. And I was quite curious. I kind of did a countdown. Like I worked out at the start of the month, I was 40% done and I had um, 14,800 stitches to complete that month. And I worked out how many stitches I needed to do every day to be able to finish it. And it was just interesting because that changed as I went on. You know, it got down to like 308 by the 12th of May. I only had to do 308 a day and then it went down and down and down until it was done. So that was kind of fun. Um, again, you could do all this much more efficiently in um, an app, but... <laughs> I just like pen and paper. Then I think this is the last bit I've really used this for this year. Um, I've been counting my uh, Firefly stitching. 
So I just have a section where I note down the date and how many stitches um, I've done. This is the to for the total year. So I've done 62,600 stitches this year. And I just realized, because I'm I was mainly doing this because of the full coverage fanatics challenge 21 in 21 um, where you try and stitch 21,000 stitches on a piece in the year 2021 and it took me until July to get 21,000 and then by September two months later I got 42,000 and now I'm 400 short of 63,000, so three times 21. <laughs> so. um, and then I've also, just because I'm me, I've worked out uh, how many I'm stitching each month as well. Uh, so I'm just aiming to get those 5,000 a month. Um, yeah, I haven't done any this month yet. So that's just some ideas for how you can use a journal like this. In previous years, I included like all the information on my whips, um, but then like kind of got out of control. <laughs> so I haven't done that this year. And I've already worked out for next year, I'll have a section for like um, floss tube preparation. Um, Cause I usually write some notes, but I usually just write them on a scrap of paper. And there's, there's plenty of room in here to, to have a section on floss tube as well. Um, so that is a little bit of insight into my <laughs> mind and how I like to organize my stitching. Um, I often just stick the pen in there. So like, that's all you need. It's good to go. Um, so that is that. And I do have one other piece of hole. I mentioned I'm using the quantum frames by Omnic and I have a Lowry stand, which I love, but I've just had trouble getting comfortable using it with the bigger frame. So I haven't really been using them that much. I do have the large frame adapter, um, which allows you to connect um, or attach your frames with less sagging, um, but it's not overly comfortable. It's a little bit cumbersome. And I just find I'm not reaching for those projects that, um, yeah, that I'd like to use on the, on the frame. So I started to go looking for a, an alternative. Um, I had a look at the Monstric stand by Omnic. So the same company that make the, the frames that I, I have. Um, it was pretty amazing, very functional, um, quite expensive. And when I looked at postage as well to Australia, it was, to me it was not an option. <laughs> So I wanted to look for some other options and my friend Anne mentioned Gus's custom creations. Um, Gus is based in Western Australia and I found info about his stands on the um, Facebook group Cross Stitch Stands and Frames, I think it's called. It's a really good um, group actually. There's a lot of, lot of um, suggestions and reviews and things like that. And so the main criteria that I wanted in a floor stand first and foremost was to hold a big frame comfortably. Also, I like to stitch um, on a recliner with my feet up. Um, so I wanted to be able to comfortably have the stitching in front of me while still having the legs up. So whether that was a really like long frame uh, stand or whether it was something that could come from the side, I didn't really mind. Um, and so I went and had a look at, at his page. He has a Facebook page called Gus's Custom Creations. And it looked to be exactly what I was after. Um, I got in touch with him on Facebook. You just send him a message. He got back in touch with me really quickly. I think I messaged him on a Saturday, um, asked a few questions, decided, yes, that's what I wanted. Um, I think I did a bank transfer that day and then he had he had it in the mail on the Tuesday probably only because it was a public holiday Monday otherwise I think he would have sent it on the Monday very very quick it took about a week to get here from Western Australia 
Um, I know he's, he ships all over the world. I've seen comments from all over the place. Um, it was flat packed, really well packaged, beautifully made, beautifully crafted. Um, it's made of Jarrah wood. Um, it's just really attractive. Um, but most importantly, it, it does exactly what I need it to do. It came um, flat packed, so a bit like something you get from Ikea that you have to kind of build yourself. He sent um, really good instructions. You definitely need to have your wits about you when <laughs> you're putting it together. I wouldn't recommend doing it when you're like half asleep because <laughs> you do just have to think about where things need to go. Um, but I'm sure he would be able to help if you had any trouble. Uh, I managed to get mine together just fine. Uh, it's really hard to show because it's quite large. I'll try and put some pictures in to show you um, how I'm using it. Uh, but it's it's fantastic. So the frame, it doesn't like screw on or attach to the stand. It just sits on, on little rests um, that stick out. It's really, really adjustable. So you can adjust it so many ways to get it um, to be like how you want, how you need your stand to be. Um, I have had it both from the very front coming at me with my leg, with my recliner up, which was great. Um, but I've actually found having it sort of diagonally on the side and coming at me is a little bit easier. Um, I can see like the TV a bit better or um, yeah, I'm just, I'm thrilled with it. Really highly recommend um, Gus's custom creations. I'll pop a link to his page in the description below. Um, if you've got any questions about it, just um, let me know, ask in the comments. Uh, like I said, he, he ships all around the place. The price he, he quoted me included shipping, so I presume that will change based on your location. Um, I mean, the best place to go for questions would be directly to Gus himself. Uh, he'll get back to you really quickly and he, he seemed really great to deal with. Um, so I'm so happy that I found a, a good like local Australian company making such a good quality product. And I've seen a lot of rave reviews um, in that group as well. So if you're interested in something like that, um, I'd recommend it. I think that's everything. Got um, Reggie right bag. I think I, I think I was going to show Jemima. I don't know where she is. Somewhere hiding from him. He's been really annoying. Um, wanting to be like in her face all the time and she <laughs> doesn't appreciate that um, but I promise she gets plenty of attention he's just uh, always my little shadow at the moment <laughs> so that's everything from me today I hope you enjoyed it if you've got any questions let me know and I think I'm just going to try and come back in another month so end of November and we'll see what I've been up to by then we'll see you again soon bye